Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of The Longest Road on Earth. Last time we left off, we found out about a lady that I believe lost her significant other, which is uh, very, very sad. And uh, yeah, now we're back to this person who is a alligator slash crocodile. Open. We're open now, everybody get in here. It's like I'm playing Moonlighter. Come on, everyone. Don't you want to come get my various sundries? I, we got, like, canvases slash picture frames. We got, uh, lamps. Uh, a, a swan slash duck. Some clocks. Hmm. We got a lot of various things. A loom? Is that a loom? Or is that a jukebox? That might be a jukebox. And then a piano. Am I supposed to go back here to the piano? Possibly. I looked at the piano. I think we're gonna play the piano. That was like a worker on a train, it seems. I'm guessing they were getting off for their stop, right? Maybe a construction worker or something? Maybe they're going home, actually. Okay, I can kind of move the screen here, but I can't really do much else. If I Yeah, 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 
Man, screw the factory that let that many people die because they only got one fire escape. That's horrible. Jeez. I, was, I had to read that twice.
is doing a really good job of capturing just how, like, soul-crushing a job can be. It seems like what this is meant to be showing us is that this person actually wants to be, like, a pianist, but they have a child, so they're stuck with their job, and they can't follow their dream because capitalism has this has them stuck in this same cycle and not able to pursue their dreams. Too real. <laughs> Man, this is like a terribly depressing one, like... Someone that just wants to follow their dreams but can't, and the monotony of everyday life when you're working a 9 to 5. It just, it just, it just hits way too close to home. Oh, that was a cool visual gag. That was really neat, actually. Hi, Cindy. And your shoes. Reliable radio. This is definitely a game where you kind of just got to let the music take you and absorb the atmosphere and everything, which is actually kind of pleasant, I gotta say. Just being able to wholly focus on everything I see and hear. Where are we actually going? Up there? Yeah.
I supposed to be getting on my train? Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Another soul-crushing day of work. God, I wish they gave me a little bit more to do in those sections where they just kind of play the song and let us switch views because it's such an uncomfortably long time of just sitting there. <laughs> like I get what they're trying to I get what they're trying to showcase. <clears throat> they're trying to showcase the long ride um to the place and in the first one they were trying to showcase just how long that character was waiting. It, they I, I feel like we could speed it up a little bit. I feel like we could speed it up a little bit. I get it. They're waiting a very long time. They want us to experience that and absorb the music and everything, but that's a long time. I, I, I don't know. It felt like an eternity I was just sitting here, so... But yeah, I get what was going on with that one. I mean, the song kind of drilled it home there at the end. Days passing by and kissing my dreams goodbye. And things like that. Like, each day that goes by, you feel like you're one step further away from... Uh, 
achieving your dream and there's you eventually get to the point where you're depressed and like well there's no point in trying now I'm I don't have time to anymore so you give up on your dream because you feel like time's passed you by and you just don't have the opportunity to anymore it's a really this is a really melancholic sad game <laughs> it's it's like sad in a much more of a deliberate way than um uh say no more was where say no more was like really sad in a comical way where they use humor to cover it up this one's just depressing so far so i hope you've enjoyed this second episode of the longest road on earth and i will see you next time <laughs>